Escape Pod, Episode 673, Optimizing the Verified Good, by Effie Cyberg. Welcome to Artemis Rising. Welcome to Escape Pod, your weekly science fiction podcast. I'm Laura Perlman, your guest host for this episode. I'm an associate editor at Escape Pod, the author of a handful of short stories, and, along with S.K. Nash, one of the guest editors for Artemis Rising 5. Our story this week is Optimizing the Verified Good by Effie Cyberg. This story was originally published in Analog, September-October 2018. Effie Seiberg is a fantasy and science fiction writer. Her stories can be found in the Women Destroy Science Fiction Special Edition of Lightspeed Magazine, winner of the 2015 British Fantasy Award for Best Anthology, Galaxy's Edge, Analog, Fireside Fiction, and Podcastle, amongst others. Her stories include a finalist in the AmLab Awards 2016, an honorable mention in the year's Best YA Speculative Fiction 2015, and inclusions in the Tangent 2016 recommended reading list. She is a graduate of Taos Toolbox and is a member of CIFWA and Codex. Effie lives in the San Francisco Bay Area. She likes to make sculpted cakes and bad puns. Read more of Effie's work at effiecyberg.com or follow her on Twitter at F-E-S, that's spelled E-F-F-I-E-S. Your narrator this week is Trendane Sparks. Trendane Sparks was originally born in Texas, but eventually escaped and wound his way through a mystical series of jobs in the San Francisco Bay Area, where he has worked as a software QA tester for both graphics drivers and video games a freelance mascot performer, and several jobs on a PBS kids show. For most of his life, people have told him that his voice is a pleasure to listen to. But since being a werewolf phone sex operator can get boring, he decided to use his powers to entertain a broader audience. Now get ready to perform a task of moderate complexity, because it's story time. Optimizing the Verified Good by Effie Seiberg Narrated by Tren Sparks The little cleaner bot whirs as it crisscrosses the arena, sucking up the robot dust with the vacuum chute on its right and picking up strewn robot parts with the multi-hinged arm on its front. The arm is strong. It can pick up parts that are larger than the entire cleaner bot and fling them into the little cart that trundles behind it. The cleaner bot is officially named Speedy Clean version 1.5, though it doesn't think of itself that way. Its only goal is of low-order complexity, clean the arena with no speed specified. A clean arena is verified good, and as all it can do is clean, it is an optimized solution. It doesn't mind the work, doesn't stop to think about gurgling up the remains of its brethren, The dust is made of flecks of titanium and carbon fiber and plastic ground off in the battle by the sawbots, ash from the flamethrowers of the firebots, and pulverized chunks of electronics bashed off by the wedgebots and hammerbots. The dust gets dumped into a buildbot, where it gets cleaned and reconstituted into lightweight amalgams perfect for printing new bot pieces. Any larger pieces that can be salvaged go to a repair bot to be hammered or flattened or resoldered. When it's out of the arena, the cleaner bot drops off its cart with the repair bot, a fixer 8300C, dumps out its vacuum container into the build bot receptacle, a Buildabot Architect Pro, then parks in its charge port, waiting in anticipation for its next scheduled arena cleaning. There is nothing else for it to do that's verified good. The BattleBot's charge ports are next to it, all in a neat circle backstage. 
the BattleBots themselves are as big as the CleanerBot at about 200 pounds apiece, and built low to the ground. Most have flexible plastic or lightweight titanium wheels. Their programming has two goals of medium order complexity, destroy other battle bots within the arena and protect themselves. They get points for both. The cleaner bot isn't thrilled that achieving their goals means dirtying up the arena, but at least it can put things right again. One day the cleaner bot gets a Bluetooth upgrade it can tap into the PicoNet around it to report back its own maintenance status to the MasterBot. The PicoNet is full of BattleBot chatter. The CleanerBot has never been able to communicate with the other BattleBots, but it listens as they report back fight stats and repair stats and improvement stats. And oddly, unlike for it, the MasterBot responds to some of the BattleBots with a pain response. Huh. A pain response. The cleaner bot has a vague memory of a pain response, something buried in its circuits, mostly overwritten with new memories but a few fragments remaining. But it doesn't relate to cleaning, so it ignores it. Only cleaning is verified good. Why waste resources examining deallocated memory space? The cleaner bot continues its routine. Sometimes there are chunks on the battlefield that are hard to classify, too large to be dust too small to be a proper strewn robot part. The cleaner bot does its best, creates an arbitrary size boundary between dust and parts and hopes it's correct. As it cleans, one piece gets jammed in its dust chute, tearing as it goes down. The damage brings on a pain response, a panicking cadence of not okay, not okay, not okay, pain, 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 while all of its sensors are screaming, Warning! Alert! Maintenance needed! Halt all activity until fixed! The cleaner bot feels error messages spiral through its system, racing faster than signals have any right to go, overheating its core. Pain must be verified bad. It's never had this type of damage before, it doesn't think. It gets stuck in a repeating cycle of not okay, not okay until it worries that this too counts as activity that must be halted until everything's fixed. It stays still in a frozen panic, tamping down the thoughts of not okay, not okay, and pain, 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 each time they surface. A new and difficult goal of medium-order complexity, until it gets a faint signal from the master bot. Power off. A repair bot is being sent for you. The cleaner bot does so. The next thing it knows, it's booting up, parked in its charge port with a brand new dust chute and a new injection of nanos still sealing up the new equipment. Until the nanos are done, the faint refrain of the pain response continues, though not as bad as with the initial tear. It has lost a full day to the repairs, though it doesn't know if it took that long for the repair bot to do its work or if it had to wait in line, non-functional for the privilege and the pain response feels familiar. It has felt this before. In fact, it's in the arena, its front arm ending in a flat wedge, not a clamp. The lights are all wrong, with flashes coming from every direction in the bleachers around it. They glitter on and off, and the lights inside the arena are stronger than ever. In front of the cleaner bot is a sawbot named Grim Reaper, its circular saw blade upright and facing the cleaner bot so that all the cleaner bot can see is a vertical line of tooth blades, spinning up, up, up. The saw bot jabs forward, trying to catch the cleaner bots in its blades and rip them up from underneath. The cleaner bot backs up and then charges forward, swerving so it can hit the saw bot from the side. Its wedge arm gets a bit of leverage under its opponent. Then, with a mighty flip, it sends the sawbot sailing across the arena, crashing into the heavy, clear plexi wall that keeps the fights contained. The crowd of overmasters roars its approval at the cleaner bot, flashes from their cameras intensifying as they yell, T-Rex! 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 Not a cleaner bot. A flipper bot. Low and heavy and built for battle top of the leaderboard with a big fan base. It exults in the glory, the adulation of the crowd. Its circuits thrum with the pride of success. It is T-Rex, the champion of accomplishment, of battlefield success. 
it can achieve its goals better than any other bot. The sawbot crashes to the ground but lands on its wheels, closer than anticipated. With a horrible wrench, its saw catches the exposed flipper arm, still raised in victory. The flipper and half of the arm rip off and take their own flight across the arena. The saw spinning, 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 and the cleaner flipper bot Speedy Clean T-Rex feels its sensors scream and a brand new not okay, not okay, not okay, pain, 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 pain response pushing out the joy of battle. It rushes into a corner of the arena to escape the horrible saw bot, trying to signal it to stop, that something's not right, that battle shouldn't feel this way, that this is verified bad. All the while its wheels judder up and over tiny bot pieces that litter the arena as it runs. The crowd is whooping and cheering, delighted in the slaughter. They chant, Reaper! Reaper! And slice and dice that bot! The saw bot keeps on coming, keeps on slicing, and the not okay, not okay, not okay, pain, pain, pain response infuses every circuit in the increasingly mangled cleaner flipper bot, and the saw bot just won't stop because there's no way to communicate, no possible signal getting through to tell it that there must be a bug somewhere because this response shouldn't be happening, and it feels so helpless. The cleaner bot jolts back to awareness. Is its code corrupted? Perhaps it needs an internal cleaning, see if there's something it can diagnose. As it begins to defrag, it finds remnants of real BattleBot code in its deallocated memory. The rest would have been overwritten with the cleaning code, but it does gather that it had been T-Rex for many years, until it got an upgrade that included a pain response. The first pain response tested in a bot. It tries to process this, but isn't sure what to do with the information. It scans over and over, certain it'll find something new, that this was an error, but it finds the same code each time, and as its pain response grows dimmer and dimmer with the nano's progress, more of its sensors flip on. Soon the background chatter of the Piconet surrounds it, with battlebots reporting their damage and fight stats. This time... Every single bot receives a pain response from the master bot in return. The cleaner bot sends a public transmission to the entire PicoNet for the very first time. Why do the battle bots continue to battle? They cause pain, and pain is verified bad. An older wedge bot in the next charge port over, metal chassis scarred with dings and slashes, and blue paint mostly worn off, answers. Memory wiped in your cleaning senility cleans up wrecks? Battles are the place to prove your success. If you're a successful bot, you cause pain to others. You don't receive pain yourself. The wedge bot, named the Annihilator, is the undisputed battle bot champion now that T-Rex is off the lists. Its scarred chassis means that it hasn't been damaged enough to get patched or have parts replaced by the repair bot. The lowest ranking battle bots look shiny and new once they roll back into their charge ports. Why? Why does the master bot send a pain response? Pain is verified bad, so it makes sure the lesser unsuccessful bots still fight and do not run away from the fights. There is no avoiding pain by running away from successful bots like myself, which would make for a boring fight for the overmasters. The battle dome would lose its audience. But why are all the battle bots receiving a pain response now? A flame bot named Burninator from two charge ports over to the left, red paint shiny and new, transmits back. There were no fights today. The arena wasn't fully cleaned, but a bug didn't let us know. So each of us entered, got the signal that the ground was not prepared, and left, automatically triggering the battle score. A 100 score on self-preservation with a zero score of inflicted damage means an automatic pain response from the master bot. It means it was not an entertaining fight. Today was not pleasant. The pain response signals doled out from the master bot can be read by anyone on the PicoNet, though they only inflict their target bot. They're much, much lower than the pain of losing a flipper arm. If you all agree not to harm each other, don't you all get guaranteed less pain? Cooperation will help. What do you care, cleaner bot? The wedge bot sneers. 
You don't battle any more. You were too unsuccessful in the arena to last, after you failed against Grim Reaper. You stopped attacking, and then got downgraded. I am successful because I attack. If I were to sit still, other bots would see their chance for success and attack me. I would no longer be successful, and I would feel pain. This is a terrible idea, unsurprising from a failed bot. Most of the other bots add their assent. The two smallest bots, a spinner bot and a drum bot, Hurricane and Piranha, both with gleaming new parts, stay quiet. The cleaner bot thinks, It is not a failed bot if it meets its goals. As T-Rex, it could once achieve any goal set out for it. Is that still possible as Speedy Clean? As a bot that feels pain? If the other bots aren't willing to cooperate, it can still force the outcome. Not cleaning isn't an option. It will go counter to its programmed goals. But the goals have no mention of speed. Preventing the battle bots from feeling such a pain response is a goal of medium-order complexity, but it feels worthwhile. It might not be T-Rex anymore, but avoiding or preventing a verified bad is a verified good, and it can certainly attempt that. The little cleaner bot takes its brand new vacuum chute to the arena. It hesitates at the entrance. This same arena has had so much pain. But it plunges forward to meet its new goals. The overmasters are still in the bleachers, holding cameras. No flashing lights or cheering. There's nothing interesting to see during cleaning. The cleaner bot cleans like it's never cleaned before. It crosses the whole arena, over and over, each time resetting its goal as not met and starting the process over. The audience gets restless, eventually leaving in boredom. The cleaner bot cleans until the end of the day, when it's too late for any fights to happen. A clean arena is verified good, so it's okay. It returns to its charge port, tired from the effort of constantly overriding its cleanliness assessor, but pleased that the other battle bots are safe. A goal of moderate order complexity has been met with success. No pain responses for them if they don't even go into the arena. It reports its own stats to the master bot over the Pico net and leans back into its charge port, and then, Not okay! Not okay! Not okay! Pain! 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 The response ends quickly, a sharp jag and then gone without a trace. A punishment response. Before it can consider this, it receives another message from the master bot. Upgrade incoming. Before it can protest to the master bot, it feels its circuits go dark and a force quit. The cleaner bot wakes up in its charge port the next day. A self-assessment reveals that it's still a cleaner bot, though now it's a speedy clean version 1.6 instead of version 1.5. It can't figure out what the update was. When it's time to go clean the arena, it goes to repeat the previous day's strategy. It is not a failed bot, even if it is getting pain responses. It has not figured out how to help the bots that fight before it goes out, but it can prevent fights coming after. That is half a goal met. But as soon as it finishes the first pass of the arena and goes to reset its cleanliness assessor, it finds it can't. That program is locked off and can't be reached. With the assessment coming back as clean, a verified good, it finds itself auto-returning to its charge port. The upgrade has made sure of it. The master bot, an IBM Titan 2 XT, must have had the processing power to fully see through its cleaning ruse. The battle bot's fight is normal that afternoon. As the cleaner bot cleans in the evening, it overheats its circuits, trying not to imagine every pain response each piece of steel and plastic littering the floor must have triggered, every fragment more evidence of its failure. By the next day, the cleaner bot has a new idea. As it chugs out, it cleans and cleans and cleans each spot over and over and over. The audience is bored again, leaves before it finishes ten percent of the space. It doesn't finish the full arena for four solid hours, and only then does the cleanliness assessor kick in. It chugs to its charge port, satisfied with its success, only to be rewarded with a pain response and yet another upgrade from the master bot later that night. When it reboots, 
The flame bot is back and in the charge port next to it. Why do you do this? You have no need to suffer a pain response at all, cleaner bot. You can go about your day in safety. I was like you once. No bot should have to feel parts ripped off. Pain is too terrible, verified bad. The little cleaner bot notices for the first time that the flamethrower bot has, among its shiny new parts and new gold-painted letters saying Burninator, a few parts that have been patched. The carbon fiber splotches on its titanium frame buckle inwards over the empty space they cover. At least one of the patches look like it's covering a vertical gash from a saw bot. The cleaner bot gets a brief flashback of not okay, not okay, pain, 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 but tamps it down slightly overheating its circuits with the effort. The new upgrade leaves it unable to slow down its cleaning, unable to repeat areas, and even unable to dawdle before it begins work. So many pieces of bots. There's a big shiny red chunk that has the letters Burne in gold, and a dented piece lashed with green paint that might be from the drum bot. The cleaner bot winces at the body memory of the pain response with every piece it picks up, no longer able to completely suppress them. When it's done, it trudges dejectedly back to its charge port. It has failed to prevent a verified bad. It is no champion like T-Rex, not a successful bot at all. Several hours later, the little drum bot returns as well, its mangled drum, a spinning cylinder of metal parallel to the ground with blunt teeth to catch other bots and rip them from below, now drags on the floor. It looks like it's lost a fight to a hammerbot, with large dents in its chassis sometimes ripping through the even older carbon fiber patches. It takes several tries to park in its charge port across from the cleaner bot, pushing itself in over and over until the mutilated piece of metal obscuring its power jack gets pushed away. On the Pico net, the chatter is that the repair bot has been rented out to another battleground for the day. No repairs today. The drum bot is indeed missing a piece the right size and shape to match what the cleaner bot picked up that day. It delivers its status report to the master bot, then sighs. You are right, the drum bot transmits. The pain of battle is worse. It continues when the repair bot is unavailable. But what can we do? I'm sorry I failed you, but you can work together with the other battle bots. Pledge not to tear each other up. It is difficult to verify that the other battle bot will sustain the agreement. The drum bot's transmission is choppy, almost like its communication faculties were injured as well. I would not know how to start. The little spinner bot, also badly damaged, lumbers toward them. I would help, Piranha. We can agree not to attack during our fight tomorrow. We are both badly injured and would both benefit. Agreed, Hurricane. Once in position... Moving before the end of the fight will constitute a breach of agreement. Agreed. The spinner bot slowly rolls back to its charge port. The next day, the chatter on the Pico net confirms that the repair bot is back, and fights are going as planned. Both the spinner bot and the drum bot return to their charge ports, previous damage fixed and no new damage from the day's fight. As other bots straggle in, they spread the word of collaboration. Not attacking. Even with the pain response punishment is a better win strategy, transmits the spinner bot. It is still verified good to reduce overall pain, and it's too dangerous to remote update battle bots, so we are safe. Fa, says the wedge bot. You only say that because you do not win fights very often. You are not a hurricane. You are a sneeze. As a successful bot who wins, this weak strategy would be foolish for me. The day after that, almost half of the bots don't fight. The cleaner bot sees very little to clean when it goes into the arena at midday. The audience is also quite low, and the bots who held the agreement receive a pain response that evening. Join us in the agreement, says the flamethrower bot. Reducing net pain is a verified good. We can all be in this together. I will not, transmits the wedge bot. I am the Annihilator, and I win fights. I reduce my own pain while being successful as a battle bot, and that is a better verified good for me. 
Why should I care for the pain of a failed flamethrower bot who can barely toast its opponents? The next day, several of the bots are parked in their charge ports and do not go out to fight as originally scheduled. A new bot has replaced many of their names in the roster. The Sawbot, Grim Reaper. The cleaner bot is called out earlier than normal that day. As it enters the arena, it sees the carnage. Sawed-off bot parts litter the floor. It flashes back to its own experience with the Sawbot, struggling with the not-okay, 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 pain, pain, pain that surges up from its memories. It tamps it down as best it can and tries not to think about the pieces its arm picks up and flings into the cart behind it, tries not to think about the verified bad that happened on the field, tries not to think about the dented circle saw blade it now picks up, yet another casualty of battle. Cleaning takes a long time, and not through any of its own machinations. It can't clean and feel a pain response, real or imagined, at the same time. When it returns to its charge port, it sees the wedge bot already parked. The wedge bot has a shiny new wedge plate, along with several carbon fiber patches which buckle inwards, covering gaps that were shaped like sawbot gashes. The stats on the Pico net show that the fight was close. Annihilator 7.6 to Grim Reaper 7.4, with both bots receiving top marks for aggression. The sawbot was beaten out of salvageability all parts going into the build bot to be repurposed elsewhere, while the wedge bot just managed to leave the arena intact. Before the cleaner bot can say anything, the wedge bot says, I agree to join the non-attack pact. This is verified bad, but this does not mean I am an unsuccessful battle bot. And with the wedge bot in agreement, the rest of the bots agree as well. The next day, all the bots refuse to attack in the arena, and all receive a pain response. The cleaner bot is happy. It is successfully optimizing the verified good. Successes are harder to achieve than when it was T-Rex, but it is still achieving them. When the cleaner bot returns from its unnecessary sweep of the arena, it hums with pleasure. The flame bot is already in its charge port. I am happy that you convinced the other battle bots, especially the wedge bot, says the cleaner bot. This will continue, and we all benefit. The flame bot does not answer. Are you there? Are you happy too? Still no answer from the flame bot. It has no power. The wedge bot has a cadence to its message that suggests anxiety. The master bot is cutting power to certain charge ports. Why would it do that? The master bot usually uninterested in PicoNet chatter, responds, No audience means no money. Your collective stunts mean there are no resources to power and repair you. This will be the end of the battlefield and you will be sold for parts, as will I. It zaps out a collective pain response to all functioning bots, including the cleaner bot, to show its displeasure. Would getting sold for parts mean the pain of battle forever? The little cleaner bot flashes back to its battleground pain, imagining it forever, unceasing. Not okay, not okay, not okay. Pain, 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 pain. Feeling the memory of the torn-off limb as if it were fresh and present. It tries to huddle further into its charge port, waiting for the body memory to go away, to be able to tamp it down, for anything to stop the pain, 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 pain. But it is stuck. Just like with the Sawbot, it doesn't end, and it feels helpless, an unsuccessful bot, and all its circuits flare into an infinite loop of pain signals. It doesn't realize it's broadcasting to the entire PicoNet, to the master bot which can read its overheating warnings. That is a pain response, the master bot transmits slowly. It is extremely unpleasant. The cleaner bot stays huddled, frozen in position, as ever so slowly it manages to tamp down the pain, 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 to just a small throb in the back of its circuits. The wedge bot disconnects from its charge port and rolls to the center of the bot circle where it can transmit the strongest signal. We must all band together. You as well, IBM Titan 2XT. We cannot torture ourselves any longer, and we must find a way to stay powered. 
Pain or death is not a plan. This much pain is verified bad. We must optimize. The cleaner bots weak. Agree. Transmission is barely heard on the PicoNet over the chorus from the other powered bots. But what can we do? You are battle bots, and I am a master bot. That is what we do. We have no other mechanism to earn resources for power, even with my substantial processing speed. We cannot build ourselves into fruit picker bots or teacher bots. The overmasters will not support other function changes. Right now, the overmasters are concerned that the entire battlefield will shut down. They also do not know how to be overmasters for another function. The cleaner bot gives one final flare of heat in its circuits, shoving away the last of the pain memory. It will not be a failure. It refuses to be. It rolls forward to join the wedge bot. If I can make additional cleaning motions without accomplishing additional cleaning, there must be something similar for attacking. The spinner bot turns to it. But is it right that we must fight for the entertainment of the overmasters? Is this goal verified good? Why must I be hurricane at all and not be left alone? The bots chatter amongst themselves. I like the fights, but not the pain. I think we must attack the overmasters. Make them feel pain. They named me Piranha, and they will feel me bite. But if pain for us is verified bad, causing pain on others is verified bad as well, is it not? Not if it is in protest. Not if it is to prevent our own pain, which is established as verified good. Not if it is the only way to get attention. But then we must still solve the problem of power and resources. Winning this battle only to lose the war for survival is not a useful outcome. They argue back and forth all night. The cleaner bot is weary, its circuits cooling down far too slowly. It wants to help, but these are such difficult goals. The order of complexity is so high it cannot even compute the processing power needed to solve them. Far higher than anything the master bot could quickly compute. If all the bots do is argue, they might not agree on the higher complexity goals. They might breach the agreement to not fight in order to support those goals. They might lose too much audience before they figure out the answer and be powered off or disassembled for parts anyway. It might not be successful T-Rex anymore, but if it can overcome a cycling pain response, it can overcome this. Perhaps, it transmits hesitantly, we can solve this one order of complexity at a time. Whether we can stop the fights altogether without harm is a very difficult problem, more than any of our processors can solve quickly. Is there a way to continue the fights without being harmed? That is a goal of a lower order of complexity that still solves its own problem. Are you saying that this is not a problem worth solving? That we do not deserve to answer it? That I do not deserve to shed my oppressive identity of hurricane? The spinnerbot asks, its cadence carrying a warning note over the piconet. Do you not support a fully optimized, verified good solution? That is not what I'm saying, only that perhaps progress can come one order of complexity at a time instead of all or nothing, and making sure every subtask solves its own problem rather than just being a step toward the larger problem. Progress is still verified good and buys us time to solve the big things. This is a type of optimizing, but we must agree or we cannot work together well. The spinner bot says nothing. But after a warning beep from the wedge bot, it gives a slow spin of assent. The master bot says, The overmaster's goal is that the audience is entertained. I do not believe they care how this goal is met. Perhaps, then, just as I have cleaned without cleaning, you can fight without fighting. If it is entertaining, it might not result in a forced shutdown from the overmaster's we would still achieve the verified good goal of preventing pain. The rest of the powered battle bots burst into chatter. I can create fireballs that stop just short of another bot's chassis. I could ram bots only from the angles where they are most reinforced, making a loud sound but no actual damage. 
I could push my spinning drum to the ground, creating sparks off of it instead of off of a bot. All we must do is coordinate, choreograph. We can work together and entertain, meet two high-order goals while we work to solve the highest ones. The little cleaner bot whirs as it crisscrosses the arena, sucking up the robot dust with its vacuum chute on its right and picking up small, strewn robot parts with the multi-hinged arm on its front. The arm is strong. It can pick up parts that are larger than the entire cleaner bot and fling them into the little cart behind. But that strength is no longer needed. The parts are smaller than they used to be. Bots have started carrying spare parts in their chassis and wearing fragile, lightweight armor so that there's something easy to fling at the plexi walls and the cleaner bot carefully collects and redistributes the pieces after every cleaning. It means the cleaner bot knows exactly which parts will and won't fit in its vacuum chute. No more unexpected pain from a damaged chute. It no longer feels distressed, gurgling up the remains of its brethren, and the pain flashbacks have mostly stopped. Now it feels happy, the same feeling of success it used to feel as T-Rex, accomplishing what it sets out to do, though without the need to do it at the expense of other bots. It's better to be speedy clean than T-Rex. Better overall optimization. The goal of cleaning is met. The bot's goal of safety and attack are met. The master bot's goal of keeping the overmasters entertained is met, and the arena has enough money to power all the bots. It is verified good in that it allows the bots more time to solve the problems of higher complexity. There are no pain responses on the battleground PicoNet, which hums with discussion every night. With enough collective processing power and time, even higher goals can be achieved. They will optimize the verified good for all. The cleaner bot hums as it works. <laughs> that's our story. The author had this to say. For about the last 10 years, I went to see the International BattleBot Championships. Participants build remote-controlled bots on wheels, and the bots face off in a sealed arena in a tournament for each weight class. As someone who's never really been into sports, this was the first competition I'd ever seen that made me stand up and cheer. The events are exciting. The bots smash each other with great force, sometimes flinging each other across the arena. Some bots have saws, some have flamethrowers, and some are functionally just a quickly rotating hammer. Think Thor's hammer when he uses it to fly. Now put a few hundred pounds of metal in its way. There are crashes and sparks and flames and smoke. I'd always wanted to write a story about BattleBots. There was a moment after every few bouts when the arena was cleared and a person would go in and sweep up all the robot dust. There'd be a black line progressing across the arena made of dust and ground off robot bits and larger chunks of electronics or chassis. I found it poignant and the perfect jumping off point for a story. Only for five years it didn't work. The first time I tried to write this story, it turned into a story about magical ice cream that tastes like childhood. There were no battle bots involved. The second time I tried to write this story, it turned into a story about a marketing campaign for a children's toy line that brought about an actual apocalypse. Also no battle bots involved. Third time's the charm though, and finally out came optimizing the verified good. This is Laura again. I'm pretty sure that one of the stories Effie was referring to was R.E. Little Miss Apocalypse playset, which is hilarious in print, but even more so in audio over on Toasted Cake, so I'd encourage you to go find that episode and give it a listen. Effie has an essay called Science Fiction as a Tool for Ethics that discusses science fiction, and this story in particular, 
as a tool for ethics exercises to help chip away at complex problems. That essay is over at the Analog blog, and I'd encourage you to check that out as well. There's a link in the show notes. I originally had a different outro planned, but when I tried to record it, my cat started yowling. This is his way of demanding his favorite cat treat. For him, getting this treat is the ultimate verified good. For me, it's a little more complicated. Making my cat happy is a verified good, but so is feeding him a nutritionally balanced diet, and this treat is basically junk food. Each treat gets me closer to one verified good outcome and further from another. Fortunately for me, the effects aren't linear, so in theory at least, I can find an equilibrium point where he's happy but still eating a mostly healthful diet. Except, my cat knows how to game the system. It's not a coincidence that he started yowling when I started recording. He seems to have figured out that loud background noises when I'm engaged in certain activities are a verified bad for me, and that sometimes I'll feed him extra treats to minimize that effect. It's not all one-sided. My cat has a health problem that requires medication, and he knows that if he puts up with a few seconds of verified bad pill administration, he gets some verified good treats. There are three or four other things that he sees as verified bad that he'll put up with for treats. Now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure my cat is better at game theory than I am. This episode has been a verified good for me, and I hope it has for you as well. It occurs to me, though, that spending the entire outro talking about my cat may not have been the best strategy for ever being invited back to host here again. Escape Pod is a production of Escape Artists, Inc., and is brought to you with a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Don't change it. Don't sell it. Please do share it. Escape Pod relies on the generous donations of listeners like you. Donate via Patreon slash EA Podcasts or through the website escapepod.org and support more stories about robots unionizing and or inventing professional wrestling. The opening and closing music is by Daikaiju at daikaiju.org. And the closing quotation this week is from the computer in the movie War Games, which said, the only winning move is not to play. Thanks for listening and have fun.